Good afternoon students. Today we are going to learn that the thin lens equation is 1 over u plus 1 over v equals 1 over f. Now, um, <sighs> welcome back to the brave new world of distance learning. Um, I hope you're coping well at your end. Um, at this end, we're doing our best to uh, deliver the lessons as we would if we were in the classroom, gonzo physics style. So, um, in the last lessons, we looked at ray diagram theory and using ray diagram theory to predict the position of the image of an object formed by a converging or a diverging lens. In this lesson, we're going to use uh, a mathematical approach or an algebraic approach uh, to do the same thing, which is the thin lens equation. So we're going to use the thin lens equation, which is 1 over u plus 1 over v equals 1 over f, um, to predict image position in a converging and a diverging lens. Now, the success criteria, in other words, what you should be able to do or to do in the course of this lesson are, we will define what is meant by object distance and image distance. We will state the lens equation. We will then use the lens equation to predict image distances in different situations. And in order to do that, we'll have to be able to apply the real is positive sign convention. OK, now, um, yes, I'm going to record this lesson in a single take. So as if we were in the classroom, and then I'm going to attempt to edit it a little bit to cut out the boring bits. Um, because we're going to do it live, uh, that means it could go badly wrong. Um, so fingers crossed. OK. Uh, OK. Let's take a new page. Now, um, we'll begin by defining what we mean by object distance and image distance for a lens. So if we draw um, our schematic diagram, in this case for a converging lens, we know that if we place uh, an object somewhere in front of the lens. I'm going to say that this is the focal point and this is the focal point on the other side. If we place an object somewhere in front of the lens, then we know that an image will be formed on the other side. Now, I wish I hadn't done it this way now, but still. Come on, you can make it there. So the image is going to turn up here. I haven't quite made my axis long enough. So this is going to be the image. Um, and we've used our magic rays to form it. Now, we didn't really need to do that because really the purpose here is to define object distance and image distance. So. Object distance is simply the distance that an object is from the center of the lens. So if that's the center of the lens and the object is here, this distance, which is also this distance, is the object distance. And object distance is symbolized as small u. So image distance is just the distance that the image is from the center of the lens. And that is this distance. So this is the image distance. And that's symbolized by small v. Now, these u and v have nothing to do with uniform accelerated motion or uniformly accelerated motion, UAM. Um, so in UAM, we used u and v to represent initial and final velocity, but that's nothing to do with this. 
These, this time we're using U and V to represent object and image distances. Okay, so I'm going to write the definitions underneath. So, object distance. Title on this. And as before, you can be making your own notes, basically reproducing these notes in your lab notebook. I might stick these in later, but I'm doing it on a blank page because I think it's clearer. Okay. So that's the object distance, that's the image distance. Now, we can simply then state the relationship between object distance and image distance as follows. So the thin lens equation is one over u plus one over v equals 1 over f, where u is the object distance in meters, v is the image distance in meters, so the unit, uh, units are both meters, and f is the focal length, which we defined earlier of the lens, which should also be in meters. Okay, so what the lens equation is saying is that the sum of the reciprocals of the object distance and the image distance is equal to the reciprocal of the focal length. Now, we're simply going to state this equation without justification. We're not going to attempt to derive it. Um, we could derive it, but we won't. Um, it's enough to say that uh, if a lens is small, and thin, by which we mean that its thickness is small compared to its diameter, then we can show, using fairly straightforward geometry, that this equation will hold for the object and the image that it produces. Okay, what we're interested in here is the uh, application of it, actually using it in this case, and we don't derive it in this course. Um, now, we'll also state here the real is positive sign convention. So this is actually a little bit like uniformly accelerated motion. You remember there that when we wanted to measure uh, distances, speeds and uh, or velocities and accelerations, we did so um, by picking one direction to be positive. So in linear motion, uh, left to right motion, we took right to be positive. Up and down motion, we took up to be positive. But that was a convention. It was just a, an arbitrary decision that we made. Well, likewise here, we make a similar arbitrary decision, and that is that real object distances and image distances and focal lengths um, are considered to be positive. Now, we'll write it down, and then we'll think about what it means. Okay, so there are four points to the real is positive sign convention. We say that distances to real objects and, and images as well, real images, are positive. Um, distances to virtual images are negative. Um, the focal length of a converging lens is considered positive and the focal length of a diverging lens is negative. Um, now, you might say that that's just common sense, that if we're going to measure distances, they're going to be positive. Um, and it pretty much is. We'll see how this works out as we go along. Um, but basically, 
um, if we measure the distance from the lens center um, of an object which is real um, then we give it a positive value and that would make sense similarly if we measure the distance um, of the image from the lens we also consider that to be positive um, it's not to do with direction it's to do with whether the object or image is virtual or real okay now where do we go next um, oh yes so we have an activity um, here it is now I will attempt to upload this although I think you'll find it in your hard copy notes um, in any case Better. Okay. Right. So we've got five questions here, or five activities. Um, I will read out the first one because there's nobody to ask to do it. Right. Number one. Here is the table of object distances you use to construct ray diagrams for a 15 centimeter focal length converging lens. This time, use the thin lens equation to calculate the image distances in each case. Check your calculated value against the value you obtained from your diagrams. So, what we're going to do here is use um, a 15 centimeter focal length lens converging. So that's the same lens that we used when we drew ray diagrams. Um, and we're going to use the same object distances that we used before as well. And we're going to use the equation to predict where the image should be. But because it's the same lens and the same object distance, the answer should agree with the ray diagram. Okay, so uh, number one then says, let's see, we have object distances for a 15 centimeter focal length converging lens. Diagram one, is an object height of two centimeters at an object distance of 40 centimeters. So let's see how that works out. Um, now, we'll do this on plain paper because we're not going to find the answer graphically. We're gonna find it um, algebraically. And again, you can do this along with me. Pause the video when you need to, uh, to uh, do a question or to, to have a think about it. I'm not going to do, I'm going to do all of these in the video actually. Okay. So, now, I think it's a good idea, even though we're going to use an equation to solve this, to draw a little sketch to show what's roughly what's going on, and then we can calculate precisely how things are. Now, I do have a cheat sheet. It's over here, uh, but I'll only use it if I need to. Okay. Okay, so let's do a sketch. Here's our principal axis. Here's our converging lens, and I'm just going to note there that its focal length is 15 centimeters. Okay. Um, now, I'm put F there, 2F there, F there. To F there. So this is really just a, a redo of the lens diagram, of the ray diagram, except I'm going to do it roughly. So um, I can't really rely on it to give me the image distance. Now, I want to put the object at 40 centimeters. So I'm using the same scale as before, that is a one to five scale. So one centimeter is five centimeters in reality. So that's five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. 
So 40 centimeters takes me out beyond 2F. So here's my object, um, and it's at an object distance of 40 centimeters. So therefore, my object distance U is 40 centimeters. Okay, now um, let's see. Um, we could uh, sketch where the image is going to be. Um, and we will. Okay, so if we use the magic rays. And again, I'm really just doing this roughly. Then the image is going to turn up here. Now that makes sense. When the object was beyond O uh, or beyond 2F, oh, you're all right, stop. Okay. Um, the object is between f and the object is beyond 2f. The image is between f and 2f. And remember that. The question is, we want to know exactly where it is, and we want to work out this distance, the distance in the centre of the lens to the image. Okay, so that's the image distance v, and that's equal to question mark. Okay, so we can state the lens equation. 1 over u plus 1 over v is equal to 1 over f. And we can put in the knowns and the unknowns. So u, the object distance, is 40 centimeters. Now, when we stated the equation, we said that object distance and image distance and focal length should all be measured in meters. Um, and that's true, but because we have distances throughout this equation, as long as we use the same units throughout, uh, we'll be okay. In other words, if we use uh, consistent units for each of the unknowns, then or each of the knowns, then the unknown will come out in the same unit. So we can do this in centimeters, which I will because it's easier. So u is 40 centimeters, so 1 over u is 1 over 40. V is question mark. F is 15 centimeters, so that's 1 over 15. Now, the real is positive sign convention kicks in here. This is a converging lens. Therefore, uh, it has a real focus and we assign a positive sign to its focal length. So it's one over plus 15. Now, uh, if that seems like common sense, well, it is. Okay, so now we've set up the equation and we want to solve this for V. Now, some of you will try and do it in a sort of fancy pants way using a calculator, but I don't recommend that. I think you should do it uh, properly uh, using fraction algebra. So, I'm going to leave 1 over v on the right hand side. No, not the left hand side. If I bring over 1 over 40, it will become negative. So I have 1 over plus 15 minus 1 over 40. Okay, now I want to evaluate the right hand side. So to do that, um, I need a common factor or a lowest common denominator of 15 and 40. Now, uh, let's see. So the factors uh, or a, a multiple of 40 could be uh, 80, which doesn't, 15 doesn't go into that. Uh, the next one is 120. And 15 does go into 120. So 120 is going to be a lowest common denominator for these two. Now, uh, 
to get 40 up to 120, I have to multiply by 3. So therefore, this becomes, so 1 40th becomes 3 120 uh, 15 goes into 120, 1, 2, 3, 4, 8 times. So 15 times 8 is 120, therefore I have to multiply the numerator by 8 as well. So 1 15th is 8 120ths, I hope it is. Yes, I think that works. There's another way of doing that, but never mind. Uh, okay. 8 minus 3 over 120 is 5 120ths. Okay. Now, so 1 over V is equal to 5 over 120. So what do we do? Yes, we flip the guy. We flip 1 over v, we get 1 over v over 1, and that's equal to 120 over 5. So v is equal to 120 over 5, which is uh, 24. Okay, since we put in u and f in centimeters, v is also going to be in centimeters. So we're predicting that V is uh, at 24 centimeters. So um, notice that it's coming out as a positive, And you might say, well, of course it is. Um, that's just common sense. And it is. So what we're saying is that if we place the object at 40 centimeters from the lens, the image is going to turn up 24 centimeters from the lens on the other side. Um, and the fact that it's positive tells you that uh, the image is real. It's a, po it's a positive image distance and therefore it's a positive, uh, it's a real image. Okay, now at this point you could check because if you grab your notebook and look at the array diagrams that we drew last week, um, Here's ray diagram number one. It's a bit messy. But we placed the object at 10, 20, 30, 40 centimeters uh, from the lens, and the image turned up between f and 2f. And actually, excuse me, if we measure that distance from the ray diagram, that's 10, 20, 1, uh, 20, yes. One, two, three, four. Well, that is saying about 24 and a half centimeters. So the image distance, according to the diagram, is 24. Uh, 24.5 centimeters. So the diagram says 24.5 centimeters, the equation says 24 centimeters. So they're actually in pretty good agreement. That's not the best diagram, so you might find in your version uh, that you get it to be closer to 24. Okay, so what this means is that these two methods actually agree with each other. Um, the ray diagram method predicts where the image will be, and the equation does the same. And they agree. Isn't that marvellous? Okay. Um, now, we can carry on and do the same thing for the next few, for the rest of the exercise. Uh, so, for diagram one, the object distance was 40. For diagram two, the object distance was 30 centimetres, which is to say the object is at 2f. Then it was at 20 centimetres, which is between f and 2f. Then it was at 10 centimetres, which is inside um, the focal length. Now, if we place the object at 15 centimetres, that is placing it at the focus. Now, we skipped that one before, so I'm going to skip that one here. You could try it if you like and see what it does. Um, 
and likewise placing the object at infinity I'm going to skip as well so I'm just going to do numbers 1 2 3 and 4 right I'm going to carry on through this uh, to produce the solutions what you should do is probably pause the video at this point and work through 2 3 and 4 and I'll see you on the other side Okay, let's come back in at that point. Now, if you check back through, um, three, two. Okay, so for number two, you should have found that the image distance was 30 centimeters. Um, that works pretty much the same as number one. Um, the object is at 2f at 30 centimeters. The image is also at 2f at 30 centimeters. Number three, the object is at 20 centimeters. Um, that's between f and 2f, and your sketch should remind you that that means that the image gets pushed out beyond 2f. When we do the equation on it, um, it works in the same way, and we get an image distance of 60 centimeters, which is in fact beyond 2f. Now, in each case, you can check back to your ray diagram to see if these actually agree. Number four gets a little bit crazy. Um, the object is at 10 centimeters, which means it's inside the focal length of 15 centimeters. Um, now, if we do the sketch, we find that um, our magic rays, I have to bit like that magic ray, um, our magic rays will not meet beyond the lens. Therefore, they will not form a real image. Therefore, the image is virtual and can only be perceived by placing an eye uh, beyond the lens and observing that the rays appear to come from this point. Therefore, there is a virtual image here, which is virtual, magnified, upright, and on the same side of the lens as the object. Now, if we apply the formula in this case, we have a U of 10 centimeters and a V of question mark, same as before. It's still a converging lens. It still has a focal length of plus 15. So we substitute in, we bring the known value across, um, we uh, find the lowest common denominator, but then we get 2 thirtieths minus 3 thirtieths is negative 1 thirtieth, and that leads to V equals negative 30. So what, how do we interpret the negative 30? Well, we interpret the negative 30 to mean that the image is virtual. Um, 
and that it is on the same side of the lens as the object, which it is. Okay. So the negative sign means the image is virtual and is on the same side of the lens as the object. Um, and that's that. So I hope you managed to get that one out. Okay, we'll pick up again and continue. From there, so now you could work through questions two, three, four. Um, so I'll work through two, three, and four, then I'll come back in again, and then we'll have a look at question five. Okay, now we're at 44 minutes, so that's not bad. Okay, I hope you're still with me. Let's pick up at that point and just review those questions. I hope those have been working out for you. We'll go backwards to question two. Okay, so um, here's question two. Now, in question two, um, I chose to do the ray diagram first and then the calculation. So here's the ray diagram. 
Um, the object is placed 45 centimeters in front of a converging lens of focal length 30 centimeters. So here's my converging lens. Now I've chosen to use a scale here on the x-axis, that is on the principal axis, um, of one centimeter to 10 centimeters. So every one centimeter represents 10 centimeters in reality, therefore 10, 20, 30. There's the focal length at 30 centimeters. Uh, and 2f at 60, and the same on the other side. Now, the object is a candle, which is 6 centimeters tall. That would be rather big on a 1 to 1 scale, but I can use a different scale on the y-axis, just as if it was a regular graph. So I choose to use a scale of 1 centimeter to 2. So therefore, uh, my 6 centimeter candle is represented as an object 3 centimeters high. Okay, so there's the object, uh, six centimeters high at an object distance of 45 centimeters. And I draw the magic rays and they meet here, which you can't see. They meet here and there's my image. My image appears to be real. Um, and if I actually measure the object distance, it's um, 5, 10, no, 10, 5, 10, no, 10, 20, 30 centimeters, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 82, 84, it's at 86 centimeters, according to the diagram. Okay, then I do the calculation, um, and the calculation tells me V equals 90 centimeters. So, the ray diagram value and the calculation value are in fairly good agreement. Um, this image is real because the calculated value is positive and because we can see it is from the ray diagram. So if we wanted to observe it, we'd have to place a screen at 90 centimeters from the lens on the opposite side from where the object is and the image would then be projected on the screen. So that's that. Question three um, is the use of a converging lens in a CD player to focus the laser onto the CD surface so that it can read the CD surface. Um, now, the hint was to draw a sketch diagram, so I did. Um, here's the laser, here's the CD, and here's the lens. So the laser light is going to be focused to uh, a point on the uh, lens, on the CD below. Now, in this case, we're told that the laser is 1.5 centimeters above the lens, so that is to say that the object distance is 1.5 centimeters. Um, the CD is 2 millimeters below, um, which is to say the image distance is 2 millimeters. Notice that we have 1.5 centimeters, which is 15 millimeters above and two millimeters below. Then the focal length of the lens is question mark. We can apply the lens formula in this case. And if we do so, one over U plus one over V equals one over F. So one over 15 millimeters plus one over two millimeters equals one over F. And that gives us uh, one over F to be 17 over 30. We flip the guy and get F to be equal to 30 over 17 which is 1.76, and I worked in millimeters in that time, in that case. Okay, question four, an insect placed uh, 15 centimeters below a converging lens of focal length 20 centimeters. So this time I did do the calculation first, um, and uh, this makes me nervous, but without doing the sketch, but nevertheless, the insect is placed 15 centimeters below the lens, so that the insect is the object, so the object distance is 15 centimeters. The focal length is 20 and it's converging, so it's positive. The image distance is question mark. Substitute into the lens equation, work it through, and we come up with a value of negative 60. Okay. Now, you might have been tipped off about that because you can see that the object distance is less than the focal length. Therefore, the object is being placed inside the focal length. Therefore, the image is going to be virtual 
the lens is going to work as a magnifying glass. So the image is going to be 60 centimeters away from the lens on the same side, and it's going to be virtual. The negative tells us that it's virtual. If we then go on to draw the ray diagram, it looks like this. Now, again, it's a microscope, so I suppose in reality what we've got is an arrangement like this. There's the lens of the microscope. Here's the object, the insect placed below it. Uh, what the lens is going to do is magnify produce a magnified but virtual image which can be observed by an observer through the lens. Um, so if we construct the diagram carefully, um, this time I've gone back to using a scale of one centimeter is five centimeters, one to five. So five, 10, 15, 20 centimeters is the focal length. The object is at 15. The magic rays tell me that the image is virtual. Um, I should have made my virtual rays dotted. How naughty. Okay, virtual rays should always be dotted. And the rays are solid. Hmm. Would an examiner accept that? I don't think so. Okay, pencil. So we need to be clear that the, these rays are virtual rays. There's no light actually passing along this path. Therefore, these rays should be clearly dotted. Okay, that seems explicit. Right, now I cheated ever so slightly because at this point I know that the image distance is 60 centimeters. So I know that I'm trying to get my rays to cross at 60 centimeters from the lens. So I draw them in and with a little bit of jiggery-pokery, I was able to make them to meet at exactly 60 centimeters. And that's that. Okay, what are we up to? 1 hour 21, so we're well over the hour, but we'll finish off anyway. Um, because it's fun, isn't it? Now, uh, the last one, question five. So we're going to do this one in real time. Find the position and size of the image of a two centimeter high object placed 40 centimeters in front of a diverging lens of focal length 15 centimeters. Okay. Um, now, notice that this time we're going to deal with a diverging lens. So let's use the same technique as before. That is, we'll do a little sketch first to see, get a feel for what's going on, and then we'll run the calculation and see what the lens equation will give us. So, this is going to be my lens. Now, this time it's a diverging lens. So, we put the little arrows pointing inward. It's a diverging lens. Its focal length is 15 centimeters. So its focal length is 15 centimeters. But we need to apply the real is positive convention. Um, a diverging lens has a virtual focus. Rays of light are not actually diverged from that point. Therefore, we have to give it a negative value. Um, if you don't believe that, go back and look at the lens action diagrams that we drew right back at the start. Now, um, it's a focal length of negative 15, so I'm going to go 5, 10, 15, 5, 10, 30, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So that's my F, my 2F, F, and 2F. Now, um, the object is placed 40 centimeters from the lens. So that's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40 is, oh wait, 30, 35, 40 is here. So the image is out beyond 2F. 
and I'll make it two centimeters tall. I'm going to use a one-to-one -one scale on the y-axis. Okay, now I'm just sketching, so I don't need to be too careful about this, and I'm not using squared paper this time, although notice that when we were asked to draw a accurate ray diagram, I did use squared paper, and so should you. Don't tell me that you haven't got any. Um, okay, now, you see what I'm almost going to do there? I'm almost going to make a classic student error of making the ray converge through the focal point. But it won't do that. This is a diverging lens. So what does it do? It diverges. So magic ray number one, parallel to the principal axis, will diverge from the focal point like so okay magic ray number two through the center behaves as before it does just carry on straight through so we have the diverging ray doing its diverging thing and it causes the two rays to diverge therefore there is going to be no real image to pick up over here the only way you're going to see this is by placing your eye here to pick up these rays and then your eye will be fooled into thinking that there is light coming along this path here and the rays meet here so here will be the image. Now, getting a bit tired here. That was the object, not the image. This is the image. Okay. So, uh, it looks as if the image is going to be virtual, diminished, and upright. Okay. Um, okay so we can see that the image is uh, somewhere inside the focal point now let's just put in our values here the object distance u was 40 centimeters the image distance here is question mark. The focal length is negative 15. Okay, so we can substitute into the rep, into the lens equation. One over u plus one over v equals one over f. So one over 40 plus one over v is equal to one over nine. At this point, we need to be careful diverging lens it has a negative focal length so we put that in as negative 15 okay do the algebra as before bring the 1 over 40 we've got negative 1 over 15 and if we bring the 1 over 40 over it becomes negative also and we get negative 1 over 40 okay we need a common denominator for 15 and 40 which is 120. Uh, 1 15th is 8 120th, but it's negative 1 15th, so it's negative 8 120th. And 1 over 40 is 3 120th, which is negative 3 120th. So we have negative 8 and negative 3, which is negative 11 120th. Flip the guy, and v over 1 is going to be equal to negative 120 over 11. We need to resort to the calculator to get that. 10.9. So that's negative 10.9 centimeters. Hmm. Um, 
Okay, yep. I'll buy that. Okay, what is that calculate calculation telling us? It's telling us that the image is virtual. Okay. Um, and therefore on the same side of the lens as the object. Um, so its position is 10.9 centimeters from the lens center on the same side as the object. Okay, so virtual at a distance of 10.9 centimeters on the same side as the object. And that agrees with our diagram, um, which said that the image should be virtual, it should be on the same side as the object, um, and it should be somewhere between the center and the focal point and the focal point is 15 centimeters, uh, so 10.9 centimeters seems about right. And that's that. Okay. So, this point then you should have in your notebook um, a little note about the thin lens equation um, and answers to those five questions. Now, let's just do a quick recap to see what we got done. Um, right, okay. So in this lesson we have learned that um, the object distance is the distance from the center of the lens and the object measured in meters but actually any suitable unit will do. The image distance is the distance from the uh, lens center to the image. And the thin lens equation is that 1 over u plus 1 over v equals 1 over f. So if you remember nothing else out of this, remember that 1 over u plus 1 over v equals 1 over f, where f is the focal length of the lens. To use this equation, we apply a real is positive sign convention which is to say that distances to real objects and images are taken to be positive. Distances to virtual images are taken to be and come out as negative. The focal length of a converging lens is positive and the focal length of a diverging lens is negative. Don't forget that one because that's often the one that catches students out. Okay. Um, we have applied that's really all the the new physics that we've got and we've applied that then to these questions you could i guess print out uh, this question sheet and stick that into your notebook and we then have uh, this is question one part one Part three, part four. Now, however, you've done this, if you've done it directly into your notebook, that's fine. If you haven't, you need to probably stick it in. Question two should look like that. there. Question three, question four, uh, that's not question five continued, that is question four continued, and that is question five for the diverging lands. Done. Okay. Right, if you've done all that, 
you can uh, now reward yourself with some YouTube, video games, chocolate, um, or the beverage of your choice. Uh, I'm going to go and have a cup of tea and provide Spot with some feline supplement number one. Don't forget that you've got a bit of an assignment to do, which is exercise 2A. Um, this should help you get on a bit further. This should able, uh, able you to get through a bit further uh, with that. Right, hope the edit's going to go okay in this video. <sighs> That's it. Good afternoon. Spence out.